today, folks, this is the shade tree. Oh, we got to get it the right way. The shade tree engineer. My new site is Hot Shot Crappie Fishing. My old site was Mega Live Hot Shot Crappie Fishing. And I'm going to show you my Mega Live uh, Hot Shot system today. Uh, I've engineered me some side protector rails because I fish under the bridge a lot and bouncing into those columns, you know, on these lakes um, is terrible on your boat and motor and stuff. But that's my uh, decal that I'm putting on my new systems. They don't have a round top on, on it like this one does. We're going to remove the top here if I can keep this camera going without it clicking off. We're going to uh, show you the, the original fully world's first fully remote. I just got this setting on here because I'm going to take it off and show you how my system was built. A lot of y'all been trying to figure that out. I scratched my head for uh, months before I bought the Mega Live Hot Shot how I could rig it up for me. Uh, with rods and screws in my back. That's another surgery that I had. And um, being a disabled veteran, uh, it was not uh, going to work for me to put it on the trolling motor and then get up and down on my knees and wind and waves and bouncing around and just with the rods and screws just getting up and down to change the uh, Mega Live system from straightforward straight down or any angle in between that they had the pre notches set for and putting it into landscape or perspective view I think is what they call it on the Garmin uh, and putting it back in the water and all that kind of stuff uh, with the boat moving around if you don't do it at the landing or before you take it off your trailer or whatever uh, that was not an option for me uh, with my limited back mobility being a disabled veteran. And uh, so I came up and started engineering this thing uh, a few months before Mega Live was available to buy. I started trying to figure it out. Well, after I got it, I put it on the trolling motor and I saw right off that that was not going to be the best thing for me with it in spot lock, flashing backwards and forwards, trying to keep the boat. Uh, where you had it spot locked. So I built a system. Uh, the first system was built on a, a Altero, Altero trolling motor from Minn Kota. Uh, I have two of them. One of them was on my old boat. One's on my new boat. I took the one off the old boat. I took the motor and shaft off. I put another shaft on it. I engineered it. I made a video of it. You could use the uh, Minn Kota remote control handheld or the touch toe foot control or you could do it on my hummingbird screens that were paired with my trolling motor and I could put the trolling motor in and out of the water I could put it on spot lock well when I designed the first system that I designed after I took it off the trolling motor I worked for months, hours, day and night, trying to figure out how to engineer that thing. So I've come up with the idea of putting it on the Altera system. And so I mounted that, mounted that uh, uh, Altera system on the back of my boat. The problem right off the bat is it's 24 volts. You saw I got 20 volt, 24 volt system in the front. I got a 24 volt system in the back and uh, putting it on two separate batteries on the back and two separate batteries on the front plus a crank battery and that's five batteries plus I had two batteries dedicated to electronics only and that was seven batteries folks now you add all that weight up well anyway this was engineering project right it wasn't designed to stay that way but I could spot lock the back uh, I could put the uh, system in the water and uh, with the Altair foot control or the handheld and or on my one of my have it dedicated to one of my Solixes and do it that way and control the other uh, Altair on the front of the boat on with the other 
a handheld remote and or touch toe or or um, through the other uh, Solix touchscreen. So uh, it was ideal. It worked fine. It's just a lot of weight, a lot of extra weight, uh, a lot of engineering to make it work right. And I made videos of that. I showed that video. It may have gotten lost now. Uh, so many things has vanished uh, here and yonder. But anyway, my first system, uh, I could spot lock it uh, on a brush pile in the back of the boat. I could put the Megalive Hummingbird transducer on the brush pile or the structure that I wanted it on or the bank that I wanted it on and spot lock it. And regardless of which way the front of the boat turned, it would, uh, I could take and move a cursor on my screen and put it on a uh, uh, brush pile and hit go to. And that rear uh, Altera Minn Kota system would lock that transducer on that brush pile regardless which way the boat turned. And so, uh, and I set my distance alarm on my Solix so that uh, the minimum amount of uh, feet from that brush pile, would, it would give me an alarm if I wanted to stay 50 feet from it or 30 feet from it or 10 feet from it. Uh, it would, I could set that in the limits of how close I wanted to get to my waypoint. And so the, the, that system was great, I thought, uh, as far as the, it working and doing everything I needed it to do. It was just the idea of the extra weight, the extra batteries, the extra cost, the extra wiring, and all that uh, entered into that. And so, uh, but that system... Uh, I could, uh, that first system, I could put it from straight for All this was fully automatic, folks. World's first and only, under the water. Change, rotate it three. Oh, I couldn't rotate the old terror but about 180 to 200 degrees, which was more than enough because I do most of my fishing off the left side of the boat for crappie, drop shotting for crappie or bass, or tight line jigging for crappie, bass, jigging spoon or uh, whatever is generally done off the left side. My wife sits on the left side or somebody that's fishing, fishing with me uh, are going to be fishing off that left side. So with it being at the back of the boat, your cone gets wider from the back of the boat to the front of the boat with the Ultera Minn Kota, or I'm sorry, with the Hummingbird uh, Mega Live transducer. It gets wider toward the front of the boat, which made it ideal. I had a wider view of the brush pile or whatever, if I was tight lining or drop shotting for crappie or bass or whatever, I had a wider view at the front of the boat. And um, so the other ideal situation uh, was, um, was with it being turned backwards, I, the Ultera system being turned backwards on the back of the boat, I unlocked the locking pin, so if I hit a stump, it would float up. It would just kick it up. And it would uh, float up if I was trolling with the big motor. Maybe forget to put, pick it up or just because I wanted to keep my Mega Live in the water and I was trolling on with my big motor or my trolling fast with my trolling motor on the front of the boat, it would pivot up. And what I mean was that that system would do this. It would pivot up just like that. It would pivot in and out as you speeded the boat up. It, and it would drop back down just like this system here uh, when you slowed down. And so that's the reason why I've got the, the shaft counterbalanced. So it will, uh, this is a thick wall uh, with a half inch diameter hole down the middle of it. And uh, on my newer systems, uh, they're designed completely different from this, and they're more lightweight, more compact. But I want to show you the this is my, after I took the Altera system off and went to uh, this system right here, it basically does the same thing. It pivots in and out. Um, I can 
I can uh, retract it in and out of the water. And this system is on a wireless handheld remote control. And it's wired up with a receiver in this box right here down under all this stuff I got in here. You see that yellow box down there? That's the antenna to it right there. Uh, is the receiver for this handheld remote control. And this is a... Re remote control that go that you use on an overhead crane or something like that but it's a 12 volt you can get 110 volt or 12 volt and then it's got a jillion wires to it you can wire it up to to do any kind of thing uh, and you can use it for multiple things it don't just have to use it for industrial use you can use it for what i'm doing with it and so i ordered the system and it's it's expensive uh, but I proved that I could do a wireless remote control with no wires having to be run to the front of the boat. No foot control, no nothing. I can just control everything by this. And so this system, basically, uh, I changed the way it retracts in and out of the boat. Uh, I can pivot it. As you see, it's pivoting up, bringing it out of the water tilting it into the boat. Now I called it the sh my site originally the Shade Tree Engineer because I shade tree. Everything is made, a lot of it's made from scrap and extra materials that I've got. This jug right here is a Zatarain's fish fry seasoning jug that I split and put on there and then I put silicon on it and fix it where it stay on there. So it protects my motors. Now I'm gonna put it back down and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you when I get it put back down that I also have a light in here and that light is shining. Can you see it in there? Can you see it? Barely, but it it shines real good in daytime, bright sun, don't bother it. Uh, it doesn't bother it at all and I can tell when I rotate it. Now watch, I'm going to rotate it to the right. See there? I'm going to rotate it back to the left. I can rotate it 360 degrees left to right. I can put it in and out of the water. But uh, like the original Altera and it depended on rods to put it into the different positions um, I could control it with a joystick on my front seat besides it being touch toe I had a joystick and I could control the rotation left or right that's left that's right I can control putting it into the down image or bringing it back out of the down image to the forward position and I could uh, put it into landscape the flat view see that and I could take it out of landscape and that system that was built on the old Terra was uh, uh, controlled by rods that took it in and out of landscape Put it from straight forward like it is right now to straight down if if I wanted to point it more down toward the bottom or bring it back up flat that was all done with rods where this one is done with cables all right you see there's a cable right here goes down to a bracket took me months to figure out this out folks to get that bracket the right length right here to get it the right length so that would pivot up and pivot down and I went with instead of using a cable to pull it down I had a spring on the back that puts tension on it so when you release this cable tension it pulls it back into the straight up and down and forward position and so uh, that's control I'm having trouble with my back bending and then this cable 
when this cable and this cable work, they're working off the same motor with dual pulleys. When one cable is tightening up, the other cable is loosening on the other pulley. When the other cable is tightening up, the other cable is loosening. And so it's, it's one motor. Now, I'm, I'm going to take my decal off of here. I never did put it on this one, but I put it on my new ones. My new ones have a rectangle top on them and not a round top because they're designed different more compact more lightweight all right so i'm gonna take the decal off now i want you to notice how i split this jug and put it on this piece of metal right here it goes up and that protected my motors from the weather now it may take two hands to eat this burger here <clears throat> let's see if i can get it off there <laughs> Folks, if you don't think it took some figuring out to put that jug on there, I had to know where to split it to and where to stop at and how to notch it out. And, and uh, so now for the first time, I'm doing a reveal on the hot shot. And the reason it's a hot shot is because I can take this hot shot bo box right here that my receiver's in. I can unhook this battery cable from the... Uh, battery in that box right over there the power and i can connect that to the power of any boat and in a few minutes if if we can either clamp it on in a permanent fixed location or if we stick a temporary bracket on there to pivot it on i can make it pivot on their boat or do what this one does now this one here is not limited by the rods that kept the original Altera from pivoting 360 degrees. This one will rotate left or right 360 degrees. And so it doesn't have any limitations except for the cable. You don't want to tear your cable up, so I got plenty of slack in it. Plus I got that cable anchored on the back here so that it doesn't kink it down here plus it's on a pol uh, aluminum plate that sticks out just a little bit in front of the transducer and that helps protect it if you hit an obstacle in Toledo Bend there's lots of stumps and you don't want to scratch this surface right here and since the surface on the hummingbird is curved when this thing floats up you can st still see straight forward under your boat and straight down, almost straight down at the same time. So when you're going up a creek or across the lake, you can see a stump before you get to it. You can uh, tell if you got your mega live down and you're just trolling along looking for new territory. Uh, you, can, you can tell if... Uh, you're going to hit a stump or you can go over the top of it. You can see brush piles. You, I say you could. I, I could. Right now I'm having an issue with my uh, Mega Live. Uh, hummingbird has given 110%, 200%. They've stood behind stuff that was out of warranty and stuff, and they've helped me a lot. But I'm still having trouble. My Mega Live is not as good and clear. Uh, fish look like slanted, little slanted uh, most of the time. Uh, then you got a two foot fog uh, on most places on the bottom of the lake where it doesn't matter whether it's a soft bottom or a hard road bed. You got a fog down there about two foot, it looks to me like, that the fish just sink down into it. And if you didn't see him go down in it, you wouldn't know he's down there. But anyway, uh, that used to not be my problem, and I don't really know. It's happened after I got this software update, and I haven't given up on them. They're still working on it, but my side scan's not working right, uh, especially the, the left side is just a narrow band most of the time. Early in the morning, at night, and late in the evening when the sun's not up, 
you see more side detail. It don't matter if you're in 40 foot of water or 20 foot. Uh, most of the time I just have very little detail, very little coloring on the left side, just a narrow band of color. And it don't matter which color palette you use. It don't matter what sensitivity contrast. I've changed that thing a million times. Uh, I believe I know as much as most of those technicians at Hummingbird. And I've rewired my boat three times. There ain't nothing on this boat don't have marine wiring except for the Minn Kota uh, Altera wires coming off of the Altera trolling motor. Uh, might surprise you, but they're not tinted, coated wires. Um, but everything else uh, that deals with electronics, depth finders, and my mega live hot shot system uh as i said my new channel now is hot shot crappie fishing and the reason being is i'm building these for garmin and uh lawrence if they want them i just built two new systems with 12 inch touch screen uh was the last one with uh with a garmin transducer mounted on it now it does not do the landscape perspective mode the ones i'm building now more compact version not near as complicated you see i got three motors on here and they're double pulley motors motor on both sides low gear low ratio uh, low rpm gear locking uh, motors they're powerful little motors uh, with aluminum pulley added on each side then i have a, a a gear reduction motor on top it has to be suspended off of a separate bracket that's mounted independent of this shaft because these motors rotate and that's the reason these motors go around in 360 circle and so because of that that's why I've got this jug as big as it is because those motors turn round and round inside that jug and with the new one I've got a, a flat rectangle box right here and I have it, it rotates 360 it retracts in and out of the water but I don't do anything with the perspective landscape view uh, I find I don't have really much use for that uh, if I'm going to do uh, the main thing that I like make alive Hummingbird Mega Live Transducer and the landscape view or the perspective view as some might call it with the Lawrence or Garmin uh, is because if you put it up in landscape flat view you can see your waypoints you cannot see those waypoints when you got it in the forward view like it is right now we're shooting straight forward on the boat you cannot see the the waypoints that you put on brush piles or structure or whatever uh in in that forward view but if you turn it up in landscape you can see where you need to go to a brush pile or something and mark that on your on your uh on that first system when i had the old terra guiding system the foot control remote and all that i could i could put a touch the screen and hit a go to and it would keep that lock that transducer looking toward that brush pile or structure so the one major advantage is that the new systems i build they still tilt up like this you control with your big motor you control with your trolling motor and if you hit something it's going it's going to hopefully save your transducer from breaking off and uh, so the, the new systems I'm building, like the last one for the Lawrence, I mean the Garmin, um, the perspective view is still with the new brackets that comes with the uh, Garmin. Uh, you can un, unbolt it and, and put it in the flat perspective view um, before you put it in the lake or at the landing or whatever because uh i don't think i don't find that you need that perspective view that much uh if you can rotate it 360 if you can rotate it left and right 
with the Garmin transducer that I saw. The, now, I recommend if you get the Garmin that you get the best you can buy, but I recommend the 12 inch Ultra 2 Echo Map 12 inch touchscreen. It is so user friendly. You'll like it if you're limited in electronics. I like the Hummingbird and uh, Minn Kota because of my disabilities. Uh, I can just touch the screen and change anything I need to change as far as settings on my unit and whatever. And I can operate my trolling motor off of my touch screen or my handheld remote or my foot control. Uh, I've been with hummingbird for uh ever since man i'm 70 nearly 77 years old going on 77 and as long as i can remember back uh i've always had uh hummingbird depth finders uh, unless i bought something that that something else came on it when i bought it and that generally disappears pretty fast i give them away to somebody but anyway uh, this system here has to have three motors to be able to put it up into the perspective view. As I said, one cable tightens it, and one cable is loose, and then when you change the direction, the other cable tightens and this cable's loose. Same thing is true uh, with the with the unit at the bottom it responds to which able whichever cables tighten and loosen now with the landscape perspective motor would be this one over here it only has one cable it tightens it or it loosens it and the spring counterbalances it on the back side so i'm showing you stuff folks that it took me months to figure out years now that i've been perfecting and redesigning and so the 360 motor up here at the top and i got it sort of taped up to keep water out of the motor and wiring and everything the 360 motor had to be isolated on a separate shaft it didn't rotate because it has to do the rotation of this shaft that supports these two motors here so i did away with the rods that were on the outside of the K, uh, shaft on the original oil tariff world's first system to be totally 100 percent remote control and and then i went with this wireless hot shot that you can change from one boat to another boat just simply by picking up the hot shot box connecting the power to another battery and so i have a another motor that i haven't showed you you can't see it but it's in this side rail of my boat and the cable comes out right here goes through a, a block pulley and that comes up to to the motor support and i can unhook it and, and hook it and release it when i take this off i take this off when i'm going down the road because i don't want my hot shot bouncing around and i don't want stuff to maybe hit my transducer or even if it's in the retracted position like this it's still got a lot of weight bouncing around down there and I don't want that. So I take this whole mechanism off and put it in the truck as well as my other stuff when I'm going down the road. So uh, I've got a Solix uh, 15 inch and a Solix 10 inch. And I, there again, I recommend that if you're gonna get Hummingbird uh, for live view, get the biggest screen you can afford i think the solix solixes process the mega live better and quicker than some of their others maybe i don't know but the others may have a little bit more screen clarity but i have a 17 inch touchscreen solix and it's blessed this old man with bad eyes i can see um and it and as i said my my fish seeing ability structure seeing ability um has gone downhill on this last so software update hummingbirds looking into it my 2d sonar not working as clear as it should and um, my 
side scan is pathetic. So um, I'm sure that they'll get it figured out, uh, get it working. And so uh, I've showed you the the uh, forward, straight forward to straight down uh, position, whether it's in in the vertical forward position or if the transducer is in the landscape perspective, this motor does all that changing from uh, forward view straight ahead to straight down or any angle in between. This motor over here uh, puts it into the perspective or landscape mode for the hummingbird uh, and the spring counterbalances it pulls it back out as you release this motor cable right here and your 360 motor rotates it left to right so I've, I've give you the reveal of the world's first and only as far as I know the world's first and only fully remote handheld wireless the fully remote uh, system built on the Ultera system uh, it had a, a limitation of rotation left to right uh, this unit here does not you can turn it left to right 360 degrees as I said your cone gets wider to the front that's a major advantage uh, uh, if you're using the hummingbird the further back your cone is from the front of the boat where you're fishing at the wider the cone's going to be in the front plus the hummingbird with the curved front on it uh even when it tilts up pivots up you still can see straight forward straight down and uh so uh that basically is the old system now the next video uh i made a little short video it wasn't very good but you can see the smaller size, the rectangle shaped uh, box that I got up here with the hot shot decal. If you go to hot shot crappie fishing and uh, you'll see a little short video of where I put a 10 inch touch screen Garmin on a uh, aluminum boat. And I did a, I did the 12 inch on a I knew, uh, really, I liked that boat really well. It's a heavy-duty aluminum boat, bass rig, crappie rig, combo type deal. And uh, I didn't get to make a video of that fella. He's from Illinois. Uh, I haven't got a video of that system after I got it all put on. But the other thing is I've got a, a dummy switch. And I want to tell you about that. In case you like me, you're old and forget things don't look at all my junk around here i'm engineering a new uh uh project right there that i'm waiting on some parts on but let me go up here and i'm going to show you on this trolling motor i've got a dummy switch i call it a dummy switch it's right here it's a limit switch uh if i forget to take that retract that system out of the water back there and I take this trolling motor in, it'll trip this switch right here, and it will put that system in, retract it out of the water, put it back into the boat, tilt it in uh, automatically. And I can override this switch if I don't want it to tilt my 360 in, if I just want to put, put down the lake with my big motor, and I put my trolling motor down, it won't shut it off. The other thing is, I've got a remote control right here on the side of my seat. Now, you watch that light back there and you can tell. I'm going to push the remote control to the side. See that light rotate to the left of the boat? Now I'm going to push it, the joystick to the right and see it go back the other way. And now I'm going to bring it back to the center where the light is in the center right there now i'm going to retract it in uh, it's in the water you push it forward to put it in the lake you push it back and it'll bring that system into the boat you see there 
so not only do I have a handheld remote that I can use standing on the ramp of the boat boat ramp or on the bank or uh, I can use it anywhere from the driver's console to the front seat that wireless remote but I also got this and the reason I like this I'm gonna put it back down the reason I like the joystick is because it's on my left side I'm holding my rod all the time with my right hand this joystick could be mounted anywhere it could be it could actually be a four-way switch on the floor I can wire it all kind of different ways uh, foot control uh, but I like this because while I'm fishing uh, if if I need to turn that just a little bit to the left to line it up with my boat my where I can see my tight lines or to the right I can just do it by as you can see I'm just barely touching that thing and and I can change see it's, the lights back in the center now just a little slight bump and I can change that thing and just uh, put it back in the center now we're going to count I'm going to push it to one side and we're going to count one two three seconds it's done gone 90 degrees so you don't have to hold this thing long just if it's not completely lined up like you want it with the bank or with the front of your boat you just touch that just barely touch it I mean just barely touch it and it moves it uh, quite a bit so that's the uh, hot shot crappie fishing go to hot shot crappie fishing you can probably uh, uh, Google or you can go to YouTube and search you can go and look at some of my videos that I put on the shade tree engineer uh, there may be some there that's different and then you can look at mega live because that's a mega live transducer that i built this system for for my system but i built it folks for all disabled folks i've i've sent videos to hummingbird minn Kota, garmin all of them try, johnson outdoors try to get somebody to work with me to build this system more compact i don't have a machine shop i do everything shade tree engineered and so uh, nobody has responded to help me uh, try to build these. I've built some from scratch for the last two systems. And as I said, they're more compact. They'll retract it in and out of the boat. They'll float up. And with the Garmin uh, transducers, you can still see good under your boat when it floats up because of the way the transducers made. And so... Uh, Garmin basically do what this one does and uh, when it's rigged up on on my shaft and I see all these people saying they got the best pole mount or the best look you mount that thing up there on the side of your boat it's a pain to take that thing in and out every time you move you forget to take it out you hit something or get up enough speed the speed is going to rip that thing off it's going to flop into the side of your boat. It's going to knock the paint off. Uh, or or it's going to tear your transducer up. Uh, there is not a better transducer mount system in the entire world that I have seen. All these people boast on what I don't even... Uh, uh, they came out with target lock. Hummingbird came out with target lock after my system. Well, I had target lock before they ever had theirs out and um, so wasn't as fancy maybe and, and I used the old terror system to do it and I give them credit for that they've got as far as I'm concerned the handheld remote the touch screen on the Solix to be able to put it in and out of the water and the foot control uh, I think they're one of the best but uh, the the um, whole thing in the nutshell is I'm the world's first and as far as I know the only one that has one that will float up with, 
when you're trolling along with your big motor or your trolling motor or if you hit something or if you forget to take it in it's going to float up like this in the water and uh, you'll you'll probably see the rooster tail and realize but if you put that dummy switch on the trolling motor up in the front when you put that trolling motor in you're going to lessen your chance of going down the lake with this system still in the water unless you want to uh, bypass that dummy switch and keep it in the water and so i'm fixing to uh, end this video uh, i've been blessed to catch a lot of fish with the hummingbird uh, i've been I was amazed when I did the 12-inch touchscreen uh, Garmin and put the new. If you go, as I was going to say, and I got sidetracked. If you're going to get, if you can get the new uh, Altera Ultra, the Garmin Echo Maps Ultra 2 12-inch touchscreen, and get the 56 transducer. That's the long, new, long, flat transducer that bolts to the bottom of your boat, the rear of your boat or on the bottom of your trolling motor, that does side scan and, and um, down imaging and everything. Just those two components alone will blow your mind. The clarity of the detail and what you can see is amazing. Amazing. And so if you're going to get that, then if you're going to get the new black box, get the, uh, the 34 transducer, the live scope transducer uh, 34 is the number on it. It's got a LV 34 or something like that. But if you're going to get the live scope black box, get the, L, the 34 transducer, not the 32. You will be amazed. It, will it make fish bite? No. But at least you'll have confidence that they are there. And so, uh, to me, uh, as old as I am, and the way my body hurts, my back hurts all the time, and I have, they took my heart out and cut the top off of it. I'm not going to tell you all my health problems, but had three more surgeries, uh, two more heart surgeries last year, three surgeries this year because my pancreas got blocked by a gallstone like to kill me. And uh, so with all my health problems, uh, I don't have to make a million casts to find out if the fish is there, but it don't make them bite. In fact, I think uh, I see fish when this system hits them, it actually will push some of them away. So it, it don't make fish bite and it, it, does not attract them to you I don't think I think it has a negative effect you catch one or two and they all vanish and so uh, so anyway uh, and that probably could be said with side scan and down imaging and any of the electronics them fish are beginning to get wise to that if they live very long and uh, so that's the hot shot system this is the Shade Tree Engineer go to Hot Shot Crappie Fishing. That's my new site. I'm still working on some problems with uh, my Solix. I think it's Solix because they replaced my transducer on my trolling motor with a new transducer, uh, side scan, down imaging, 2D sonar. And I'm having the same issues with the new transducer on that Altair uh, Minn Kota, uh system on my both my 15 inch and my 10 inch Solix so I believe it's a software issue and uh, there is no way the contrast and the, and the sensitivity seems to be so hot that it's 